for us to move forward onto our disassembly here uh, using Spark Tester, Verify Spark, yes or no. Uh, you guys were doing, uh, like I said, your compression test last week. Fan shroud and take, it says, is it necessary to move? You're going to answer through these questions. I'm going to move down to uh, the flywheel portion of this. It's going to be a little bit out of order here. And then I'll, we'll do some other individual videos on the coil, on the, excuse me, the fuel system and on the uh, exhaust manifold. But we're just going to go ahead and get this guy out of the way right now. And there's a lot of steps to doing that. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this ignition coil. And we have two fasteners here. You guys look at this because you're doing the same exact engine. Okay, now this coil, I want you to see something here just so you're getting an idea of what it looks like. I got a wire here. Did you see how I disassembled that? You do not just take and rip the wires apart. Firmly support it on both sides and disassemble. Make sense? Yep. Okay, so with this being loose, another thing that you could do is it could be left here. And on this one, this is real common on Honda motorcycles, is we could disconnect it this way. Okay, so, and on this one with this other wire, that is what we'd have to do. What I want you to notice is how, once I've taken these bolts loose, can you see how this is slotted and how this moves back and forth? Yeah. In our small engine here theory, you guys are going to learn about, watch what happens here. So I'm pulled away. Do you see how it's sucked up? Good. So that's... That's called air gap. And what we do is we take a, a feeler gauge and we lay it in between there and we tighten it to a specification. I think it's like eight to 24 thousandths of an inch. We tighten these down with that feeler gauge in between here and that sets the distance for the coil to the magnet. If it's allowed to touch or kiss that magnet, or we, or excuse me, uh, yes, if the coil's allowed to touch the magnet, are we gonna have a problem? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, okay. So what I want you to notice here is be away from the magnet, go ahead and remove remove these fasteners. Now I'm going to do something a little different here just to get along. I don't need to label these for myself because I know where they go. I know what they look like. I've done this you know, so many times redoing the same engine over and over. What I'm going to do for right now is I'm just going to set them on the baggie out of my way. Make sense? Yeah. Because what I might do is add multiple pieces to the same baggie just to, to save on my organization. So we're at the flywheel point here. And we have some obstructions that can really get in our way here. We have these studs on the motor. And what we're looking to do is a couple different things is we're going to take and put this strap wrench around here. And what's going to happen is we're going to fold it backwards like, like so. And there's a way to tighten and a way to loosen. So if I'm going to turn this way, the strap wrench right now is the wrong way because I, I, I'm going in the direction of removal. So if I take this here and go this way. Okay, so when I hold it like this and I take this nut off, do you see how I'm going to be able to secure it with hand tools? Yeah. Okay, so let me show you the strap wrench again here. This is adjustable. You guys might end up finding it laying around like that. We're just going to loop that through and we're taking whatever we want to wrap around and you have to have enough extra to be able to, to get the wrench to fold back over itself. Can you see how that folded over there? That's really important. If I try to do this, okay, what will usually happen is it'll spin and it doesn't actually secure it. It'll spin inside the strap wrench. We want to give it a little more play and then come around like that and hold it like so. Okay. Now make sure that we do not, let me show you how to do it wrong. Don't go around the studs like this. If I wasn't paying attention, I did this. Can you see how I break the studs? And you guys can see that over there. So we're only going to secure the part that we're going to hold. Now there's two different ways we can do this. My socket's high enough here, so I'm not worried about this. You guys know that I'm a pretty big fan of extensions, though. Okay, so I want to go this way. Now anytime we have multiple hands, it's a good idea to just go ahead and uh, take advantage. Because this is not mounted to a chassis. Okay, you want to hold that? Okay, so maybe want to just, just hold it. Don't try not to turn. I don't want you to hit the block or anything else. Come over here with the camera so you can see what we're trying not to hit was other raised portions of the casting or anything else. So we don't want to hit here. And then our belt, we want to make sure isn't falling down and only supporting a small part of it. 
Okay, you ready? Yep. Why don't we get some people to hold the motor and bench there? And try not hold plastic or any thin metal that's going to bend. Okay, and then we broke it free. Okay. Would this probably been easier still in the chassis of the mower or deck or whatnot? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Now take that off. Now I'm going to show you my favorite way of removing flywheel. A 3 8 impact, one of my favorite tools here. Got a half inch adapter on here. Now, if we look in the, now this is that whole thing I'm talking about, about going out of order. When I follow Honda's recommendations, Almost always, they'll have us take a carbs off, exhaust off, valve cover, cam cover, uh, sometimes cams. They'll get us all the way down. We'll have a head off, and then I have to hold and support flywheels because I, I lose my rotation and my piston beam will go up and down. Now, would you agree with me right now that my piston can go up or down unobstructed? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what I like to do on clutches, primary drives, or flywheels is I like to... <coughs> to always test your tool before uh, taking off with it. I like to go ahead, I'm going to tighten this one quick. Okay, so we had broke that free using the strap and doing it by hand. So go ahead and reverse this. Now, since this can rotate and I can't hurt anything, I could simply go onto a flywheel or anything. I don't have to hold it or support it. And do you see how it just got a little bit of a spin and that popped it off? Yeah. So this is a safe way to do it. Is this the way to assemble it? No. no. No, not at all. Listen to me on this. When we assemble in torque fasteners, we want to absolutely make sure that we are holding it properly and torquing it with a torque wrench, not just using an impact. Make sense? Yep. Another tip I want to give you guys is when you're... Uh, when you're working with air tools like this, if you're done with the air tool, uncouple it so that you don't, you know, bump it or have somebody do something like that. Make sense? Okay, so our next thing that you guys are going to notice when you go to take yours off is you're going to see on the flywheel here where it says polar. Let me get closer on both sides here. You see the words polar and some arrows. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> polar and some arrows. Now what's funny about this is you guys are standing right here. Do you see the magnets? Yeah. And you see where it says the polar? Yeah. Okay, and over here, there's no magnet. There's only a magnet in one spot, and it says polar. Now let me flip this around so the camera can get this. We have our magnets here, and then here's where it says polar, right here and here. Per a different Honda training video on one of their engines, they actually say to never install the polar across the magnet. But in this particular engine, that's the way it's designed. What we're going to do is we're going to grab onto a tool like so, and then we're going to uh, pull. We're going to pull the flywheel up like this. I got a few other steps to do before I go ahead and do this. Okay, but that's what we're doing. So when they say polar, that's what we're trying to do. Now we can adjust these uh, these uh, two jaw pullers here. We can move these up or down. Sometimes they have shorter arms in here. These, the way they're set up and the way we've left them, is for our Honda GVC engines. I could tell last person that's used these, the nuts are getting loose and coming off. You do not want these rigid, but you don't want them loose. So you don't want to take wrenches and tighten these down. We need the flexibility to move. Is everybody clear on that? Yep. Okay, so I'm just snugging this up with no wrenches just to make it safer to work. Now a tool that's missing from our bench right now is grease. Anytime you ever use a polar, we have to grease two areas on the polars. Anybody know what two, those two areas are? Threads. Tip. We're going to do the tip of the tool because it's going to wedge into the flywheel and then you also want to grease the threads <clears throat> because what's when, when I pull up on this and I'm impacting on this, do you see how the threads are getting a ton of, they're taking a ton of that force? Yep. <clears throat> and that's going to produce heat and that's going to be a, a problem on there, okay? We're going to engrave in the top of this what size it takes so that you don't have to think so hard. I believe it's a metric application here. 18 millimeter. So I'm going to take our Harbor Freight engraver here. We'll just put our 18 so we don't have to think so hard. Okay. All right, so a couple other things I'm going to have to think about on here is I need to be able to grab on to where I'm not going to hit something.
Okay, do you see how I've got a boss here and there? Just stay, keep the camera there. If I were to try to grab in here, do you see how I'm close to some of this other casting right here? So I'm going to try to see if I can find a spot that I'm going to be able to get on both sides here and have the least amount of uh, or excuse me, obstruction by anything on the, the block itself. That's pretty important. How many people have ever used one of these before? A couple of you? Okay. All right, so we got the couple spots for grease. I'm going to add in one more tip that's going to be beneficial. These come off pretty easy, so they're not that big a deal, but they can be a real bear on a lot of engines, especially you guys are working all these that are brand new and never been used. What happens when you get a bunch of heat cycles and, and they're 10 years old, don't, are these harder to get off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they could be a real bear. So what I want to focus on before we try and remove this is we've got these threads in here. Can I get everybody up here to look at this? How would you describe the center of that shaft? Hollow. Hollow? Dividend. Okay, so it's hollow. Now, when I take this pointer and I take that tapered tip and I push it into that hollowed surface, what force is it exert exerting on that? Outward. 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 So it's wanting, to, it's wanting to take that hole and spread it outwards. Would you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. So watch what we're going to do to help reduce that. We're going to take our nut and put it back on here just flush with the surface. Do you see how that strengthened it? Yeah. So that's what you always want to do. Now some people will go to the extent where they'll actually flip the flange side up the bottom of the nut here where the, it has the built-in washer on there. This is not necessary on this, but just to make a point, they'll go this way. And when you go to remove like swing arm axles or wheel axles that are seized in there and you got to start beating them with a hammer, if I simply just beat on this, I'm going to mushroom or flare it out and then it can't get through the size of hole. So this is super important. So everybody clear? You're going to put your nut back on there? Yeah. Okay. Just nice and flush. I do not want the tool to dig into my nut, right? So I'm just flush on there like that. Now's a good time for the video I could take and uh, put my grease on here and I could just be done with this guy. Make sense? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to take and just get some uh, grease on the threads of these pullers. Now, I got to make sure that I'm going to get it greased up so that the grease is able to work its way through the inside. Make sense? I don't know where it's going to land on here. If I take in, in grease up here and the threads are pulling here, it's not, going to, it's not going to make my tool last any longer. And I know there's going to be people watching this on YouTube saying, hey, that's extreme overkill. I'm okay with that. It just makes our stuff last longer. All right. Get this to loosen up just a hair. Grab on here. Here. Yeah, I'll take an extra hand there. Okay, now do you notice I'm kind of wiggling around a lot as I'm doing this? Yeah, yeah. getting a good fit. Okay, and what's happening is I'm trying to get this as equal as possible. I do not want to dig into a fin, so I don't like how close I am on this one. I'm going to take and loosen it a little bit, and you see how I, I can choose to move it over and split the difference. Yeah. You guys see, I'm sure you'll be able to see that in the video. And this one here, thank you, Ryan, saw it was a little off on that side. There's two steps that I have uh, to be able to do um, on, this, on this next step. Now, the service manuals a lot of times will tell us to put this on here and make it snug. So what we're doing is we want to go in the tightening. I'm just going to get it tight. Uh, this, this might actually pop off. Okay, my nut is loose, and so now a lot of times what I could do is simply tap it, and it did. It, it came loose. Okay, some people are going to choose. How many times I hit it? Twice. 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 It came pretty easy, right? Some people like to take their impact and, and sometimes you just have to. Sometimes they're so seized on there. There's nothing you can do. There's some motors that I've taken and got this really good and tight on there, if you try to just keep tightening on there by hand, that's a lot of times where you'll strip the polar or you'll damage the crankshaft. So there's times where I've gotten this on here, got it on there really tight, and then walked away. Just let it sit. 
or then if it's you know sideways on engine come up and give it a couple of whacks walk away from it come back later and see if I can get another half turn out of it or something and then whack it and get it to pop does that make sense mm -hmm. it doesn't always just come off super easy every time you go to use it you'll notice here that everything I did there was a lot of intent on where I was putting the grease where I was setting the tool up You'll notice when I grab this puller, am I always securing it so that it doesn't smash down on this aluminum flywheel? It will break very easy. These fins are easy enough to break off. You see how I'm loose on there? Now, here's something. It doesn't take much effort. If I were to just push on this by hand, it'll seize back on there, and it's going to take the puller to get it back off. The taper that that's on is extremely effective. Okay? Let me get this off. For right now, I'm going to set this on my rag, not on the bench. I'm going to go ahead and lift the flywheel to show that keyway that we're talking about. I know this is an assembly tip, but it's something you can inspect right now. We want to make sure there's no grease in here whatsoever. Okay, This needs to be dry, and the shaft itself needs to be dry. You might see on your training engines a, a, a smear of oil or anti-seize or something around here because we're putting them on, taking them off, putting them on. We're just making life easy. In the real world, on a tapered shaft like this, where we have where we have a keyway and on a taper like this they need to be spotless clean you don't want anything on there because what's happening that keyway that we're talking about that's what's setting this magnet into the into the right position to hit the spark right before top dead center like we were looking at in the classroom does that make sense mm -hmm. 